Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. So here we are in this weird time in Brooklyn Bay Ridge, the land of the Lenape people. The Lenape, an offspring of the Algonquin civilization, spoke Muncie. All of us here remember, reflect, mark, resist, persist, assist to combat erasure. And today, also, and especially here at the Poetry Project, we are thinking of a great, great friend who traveled out of the Styrian life form recently. The great Louis Borch. Here is a poem for him and through him. I found no crepes in Louis Borch's poems, but here's some of what he says about food. I want to go to a restaurant where the waiters call me comrade. Won't order any new food in restaurant for fear I won't like it. Order only what I like. Another ruined evening. The guy pointing the gun at the side of my neck was sucking on the lollipop. The restaurant turned me away because I wasn't wearing a jacket and tie. In the fairy tale, a wedge of cheese falls from the beak into a puddle. An empty bottle of soy sauce alongside a can of warm beer. It's still dark out when I drink my first cup of coffee. I keep the salt on top of the icebox along with honey and a bottle of cognac. Lunch is served, soup with kumquats, mixed seafood grill with bouillabaisse sauce, root ravioli and chocolate chip cookies. The father buys his son a bar of chocolate for the ride home. There used to be a restaurant around here where you could sit for hours over a cup of coffee. A single drop of rain explodes on the windshield. My father drinks coffee from a red thermos to stay awake. I cut the food into tiny pieces and arrange them on my father's plate. Biting the hand that feeds you turns out to be no fun. Some mornings cold soup makes a natural environment. The food in the icebox, the books on my shelf. Tantalus serves the body of his son Pelops to the gods. It's rare to find someone who's willing to share food with you. The words mean more than you say, a meal ticket to instant happiness. So are you ready, Pierre? I'm ready. So I've been making crepes for many, many years at the Poetry Project and at home. We've been together how many years this year? 30. Okay. And um, we always talk in the family, we are making crepe. But I really realized that he's <laughs> never made crepe. <laughs> but, you know, we were making crepe. So today, Pierre is going to be making the crepes. We are having a tutorial. Since I could not bring them to you at the Poetry Project, I thought you should make them at home. So, we're going to do... You're going to mirror me. So this is my grandfather's crepe recipe. We're going to start with a sweet batter and then we'll give some other option for people who don't do, um, who don't do dairy and who don't do, and who are vegan and gluten-free actually. So because we want everybody to be part of the party. So here you go, your flour. These are two cups of flour. So I didn't sift the flour, so it's good if we kind of Whoop it a bit. Whoop it a bit. We add a bit of salt. And then, in your case, okay, go. In your case, you're going to add the sugar. I'm not putting sugar in mine. I don't want sugar in mine. How much sugar do you want me to add it's here? It's exactly what you need. It's uh, wow, that's a third a, of a cup. Is that's not sugar. only sugar. What else it is have you put sugar in cane there? sugar and organic sugar. Uh, it's fine. I will, however, put maple syrup in mine. To have a little difference but and we change tool Ooh, we make a well in the middle and i forgot to take out one thing but it's ready here oh your milk my milk we have exactly the same thing so now here we're going to put the eggs in a separate bowl to make sure the egg is good but you take the whole egg you, you, oh, I take the whole egg see this egg is good now i have to throw them in front of you 
<laughs> I usually go like this. Oh, but I put it here. I know my eggs are good. Now starts the moment where things can get a little tricky because we don't want to have grumeaux, lumps. So that's where we have to go. Lumpy gravy. We have to go. See, look. And this is very interesting. And you have to be patient with this. <coughs> so you kind of do like an omelet. You've seen me doing enough, so I have Patience, again. my middle name. Too. And that is going to depend <laughs> if your eggs are extra large or not large. But once you see that it's starting to be a bit thick, yeah. Then you add some. What you do, you add a bit of liquid, and yours is going to be easier to do because you have the sugar in. That mine. Ah, okay. And how does this look? Should I put some You're milk fine. in by now? No, not yet. Not See, I'm yet. putting a little bit on mine to to loosen it up gently. See? I, should I put some milk in there? Yeah, a little bit in mm -hmm. the middle, gently, and then you go from the middle and you go towards the outside. La, regarde, regarde, la, from the middle. Yeah. And you go towards the outside. Hmm. See? You come back to the middle? No. You go towards the outside until it gets thicker. So, the reason why I didn't put sugar in mine, to be honest with you, is because I didn't have any more. Because we. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I has left. So, I really believe that you have to do with what you have. So, I Ooh. gave it to you so it was easier. Yeah, you can go ahead with your milk now. Oh, you're using a lot more milk than Well, I but do. I'm more advanced in my uh, process. You're more advanced. No, Women are more advanced, basically. Focused. Be focused. Look, look at mine. Yeah. Look how beautiful. It's gorgeous. It <laughs> yeah, because I'm patient. Now you can go put a little bit in the middle, a little bit in the middle, and go from the, from the inside towards the outside. See, it matters. The love we put in the preparation matters. It's like a translation, Pierre. Oh my God, you're sweating already. <laughs> what? When you translate poems, do you sweat? I know you don't sweat when you write poetry. You, uh... Huh, how do you know? <laughs> I, I, I sweat more when I translate. Yes, that's I, true. I see you when you write poetry sometimes. Is this a kind of translation? More, more, more liquid. More liquid. We have exactly the same amount of things. I know. And once again, I would like to stress the fact that we made it easier for you by giving you the sugar in it. See? Mmm. Look how nice mine is. Okay, let's keep doing it. Keep focus. There we go. Voila! So it is advised. So now, because I am... Ah, I think if I change my hand movement a bit, that makes it feel better. Very nice. It's looking good, see? A tiny bit of lumps, but not too bad. So I am using maple syrup in mine because I didn't have sugar and I kind of like to have a sweet butter for the sweet You have crepes. all your milk in there. All your milk already in there. Huh? Yeah. Now, not all the milk will have to come in here, right? Uh, if you're satisfied and you have no more lumps, yes. If you have lumps, then you keep working at it. And see, no offense, but look, you haven't worked your sides. No, I have not yet. I'm just kidding. But that, it's sides. not yet. You should have done that before because now your sides are wet and they're going to create the lumps. Ah, so, okay. See? Here we go. Very nice. See? You do that very brilliantly. Okay. Now, but put I your... I still see lumps here. It, well, much less. Okay. All right. So, we can do vanilla. You want okay, vanilla? Okay. Put a bit of vanilla in there. We can okay. do vanilla. Oops. You have to finish your milk. Ah, Those okay. are your proportion. Okay. Yeah, you have to put all your milk. You can go ahead now. Now you're fine. You make it a beautiful one. It's very good. So now these are going to rest. Very beautiful. It actually came out nicer than mine. All right, make, make him rest there because we're going to make them soon. So we not we don't need to. But if you if you let it rest overnight, be very careful that it will be some deposit. The flour might have deposit at the bottom, so you really have to shake it really well the next morning when you're going to make when you're going to cook your crepes. So now but this is an option to make vegan, gluten-free type of crepes. So what do we do for this? We use 
buckwheat groats that actually uh, Pierre had um, um, ground ground through the with a coffee grinder because I didn't have buckwheat flour, but I always have groats. So take one cup of this, and I like this version because we use it two ways. Yes, please. And a little salt. You have the salt? Here's the salt. Nope. Give me some salt. A little salt. I'm not going to put sugar in this, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this is actually a better one to make savory crepes. We also make waffles with this. So if we make waffle with this, we keep it thicker, and we add baking powder. If you make only crepes, then you keep it thinner. And you don't put baking powder. What you need to know is the basic. The flour, and the water, and some salt, salt. and it works. Okay, so go ahead. And it's about, we have, um, how much did we have? A cup? Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a cup. That's a, a cup. cup and a bit. Nearly a cup and a half. Mm, I love the smell of it. Yeah, oh, that smells wonderful. Yeah. Okay, stop, because I want to see. Mm. Yeah, it does. And on top of it, it's because you, 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 grind, you grind it. Well, buckwheat is not a wheat or anything. It's more like a flour. It comes, we got that from China three, four thousand years ago. They started it. It went up to Tibet. From Tibet it moved to India and over, and then it was brought over. How uh, much did you put here? Cup and a half. It's going, that might be a little bit too thin, but we can always have flour. But, you know, we'll, we'll check later. We're going to let it rest because things kind of get, get, um, get, um, get heavier. Get heavier as they get thicker. Uh, the way that buckwheat, which of course is not a weed at all, but a flower, as I said, um, came over and it is wonderful usable because it grows, it doesn't need very rich territories. In fact, I'm going to make the waffles. In this country, uh, they used to plant something like a million acres of it early in the century. And then when they got uh, nitrates, i.e., you know, uh, fertilizer, uh, that was very bad for it. And they replaced it with crops that grew better with nitrates. And buckwheat now is 60,000 acres or something of that order, but growing again, given that uh, people are beginning to use it again. So it's fascinating. It clearly was also, to some extent, the poor man's... Uh, I know in my country, in Luxembourg, it's in the northern mountains, in the, in the poor places, where buckwheat was grown and used. We didn't use it as pancakes. In Luxembourg, they, they made it as thick kind of uh, crenelle type 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 oh, thing. Like, um, like, they, they, they uh, like them. Spätzle. Like Spätzle. Yeah, right. I have done that, it. That, that kind of thing. What is fascinating, and uh, I got confused when I was reading up on it, there is an, um, uh, the French, of course, were the ones who uh, started making this kind of pancakes in Brittany in the 13th century. And so this was, this was very interesting. But then and Nicole has this on her blog, and, then I, and I was looking it up. I also came across this Pope in 540 or something in Rome who welcomed French Christian pilgrims by giving them crepes. And I thought this could only, they could only be a Galas His name was Galassus, and he was the last Berber, a North African uh, Pope. He prevented people to do their pagan ritual. Rituals, he stopped right. the Lupercalias. That's right. He stopped uh, all the great uh, crazy Dionysian festivals. Yeah. And so then, what is even today, the festival in which the crabs are made in France, which is on, on second, what is the second February? Second the of February. Hold on. So, in order to put a little, this is for the waffles. I've decided to make the waffles. So I actually putting a little bit of, uh, of coconut oil. We're keeping it vegan here. So uh, I was confused because I said, no, buckwheat comes later. Buckwheat comes in the 14th century. It was known as Saracen. It's still known as Saracen in French. It means Saracen, that is, uh, it was broad. It came from the Crusade, so it was... It's also called what? Moor? Uh, no, in Occitan, in Occitan, they call it Blanc de Moro. Le don't, Moor flower. They call it the, the, yeah, the Moor's flower. Uh, so that could only have come then, which means that in 548, under the Pope, they must have used actual wheat already uh, to make those, uh, uh, what he offered the French pilgrims. Anyway, they went home and 700 years later, uh, no, yes, nearly 700 years later, they actually came to Saracen. So, buckwheat. Now, 
we're doing the vegan waffles that will also be doing the vegan crepe. Here we go. See? And this, I think I had two cups that would make about two big waffles. And we often do that for, um, I'll show you a little presentation later, for a Sunday brunch. So now we're going to cook the crepe. So those are regular crepe. We're going to melt some butter very slowly. Way of putting our butter on these pans here to warm them up. Do you have your batter, Pierre, ready? Your batter. batter. Mm -hmm. So here, what I like to do is this. It's actually melt the butter and put some butter mm -hmm. in the batter. Butter in the batter, butter in the batter. Here you go. So, um, now you gotta make sure your pan is really hot. So you gotta watch first. I will do that. <laughs> if you use a Teflon, uh, Teflon, pan, yeah, I mean, kind of this coated pan, be very careful the kind of utensil. Do not use iron mm -hmm. because this is really proven. Really use a uh, what? But they not the one, not plastic. It's actually the one that are that don't melt. You know what I mean? It's called. It has a name. So here we go. Pan has to be really hot, and then you make sure you have, you know about the exact amount you need, because you go from the middle, and then, see, and you have to have this rest action, because you don't want to put a hole in the crate. Mm. There you mm. go. So, and then you have to manage the fire. Garrett Lansing. Garrett Lansing poem. Yeah. Problems of poetry, same as those of the alchemist. That's in Seth. That How to about. manage the heat. Yes. So, careful. So now it's dry, and the, you can see the around. Ah. Here we go. Perfect. And usually the first one. You don't expect be. me to do that that way. I totally do. However, I'm going to give you a trick or a, a, a piece of advice that you need to remember. When you start flipping the crepe the first time, you don't do it over your fire, because if you drop it, <laughs> you create a fire in the house. <laughs> so second side is a little faster to cook. I always have a pot of water with a, um, plate. With a plate on top in order to keep the crepes warm. OK, now flip them here. I'll show you. I'll show you so I don't set you up for so now, here now, now, I need a bit of, of butter. You need butter. butter. Whoa, 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 this one's going to Yep. Work. Butter. Okay, in the middle. Now, go ahead with the... Yep, you can do that. You can do two if you're... Uh, no, 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 that's for you. I saw that. Right. No, no, you, you do. You do Oops. it. You do it. Okay, but wait. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. Perfect. The other one. Bravo. We'll see. A bit. By the time you would have made 200 or 300. Before. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Move, move it, move it, move it, move it. Move it. All right. I like the so, tango move. All right. So here, here, they're, they're a tiny bit thick. So maybe at some point when you feel your crepes are too thick, you can add a little water or a little milk, but since we've used whole milk, actually water will be fine at this point. So again, what are we watching for? We're watching that there be no holes in them. We watch the blub, blub, blub coming up there, and then we watch the edges. But most then, of all? Most of all. The dryness is dry, it's almost dry. Okay, when it's, okay, I okay, see. Now, you can start shaking it. See? Yeah. And because I put the butter before and you have a nasty pan, that helps. Atasho, don't make it over the fire. No, this has fire too, so move. Almost. All right. Oh, it's, it came it's out folded. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay, now this one. Hold on. Let me tell you something. When you have it here, see, the trick is this. The trick. If you move it a little bit like this, and then up. Can you do the What's next 25 to so I can what? see really well? <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn around. All right, good. 
but it's not totally ready yet. Uh, it's fine. It's yeah, it could have been a little better, a little more. But it's because it was a little too thick. Oh, my waffle! Your waffle, my God, your waffle, your my waffle. My waffle. All right. So there's my waffle. So this is going to be delicious. You can put some, uh, um, as I said, vegan coconut yogurt pears, beautiful. Little maple syrup, agave, something like this. A little yogurt. We can eat. We yeah, can if eat you're sugar. not vegan, you can do, um, but anything. gluten free. Yeah, anything. For lunch, we will often do uh, Greek yogurt, smoked salmon, or salmon egg. That makes a really beautiful brunch. And a poached egg. Magnifique. magnifique. Weekend brunch. Indeed. Weekend brunch. Yeah, yeah. We'll but I won't get to tell all the stories about crepes, can I? Will I? Yes. It comes from Latin, crispus, which means kind of crinkly, crunchy with edges. What is interesting to me in that is that uh, when you flip it up like that, this one came down the wrong way. Attention, not over the fire, I told you. Yeah, it goes up as a crisp in old French, in crisp. It comes down as Please, a crisp. Please, well, pay attention. This is a fault. That doesn't work. Please, this is messed up. Okay. Imperfection. Yes. Ah. But she has hands that can touch heat. Mine cannot do that. Then don't mess it up. When it comes down is a crap. Voila. That's wow. because a little part in the middle got stuck up there and when it comes down on crap it becomes the circumflex. The S has turned into a circumflex and you get a crap. Ah. From Crispus Latin, you lose the S up there, it comes down as a circumflex. Very good. All right. So This one know. should be good, no? Yeah, yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Perfect. So... No, this was the one I did. Yes, the other one is for the cooking. So while you do this, if you can manage on these two fires, meanwhile, I'm going to try to do the others. Because they're going to be a little harder to manage. I'm really setting myself up for a little complexity here. I'm going to leave the butter with you on this side there. Right? Thank you, dear. This so, one was already on that. It doesn't have fire, dear. Ah. Oh, that helps. So, fire helps. A bit more. Okay, it's the dryness that helps yeah, see, you to get done. This is, this is not dry. Right, right here. okay. See, you see this? This is not dry. Ooh, look at that. It's a bit brown. Yeah, that's, that's almost perfect. Maybe a tiny bit too much. But what do you mean? Is it a tiny bit what? A tiny bit too much. Okay. Tiny, tiny bit. In between. You, work, you have to be in between. All right, so here we're gonna try That's my the buckwheat one course. that has only water and salt. And, wow, look at this. And um, coconut oil. Actually, you can do anything you want. You can make really, really good savory crepe with putting an egg in it, ham, right, right. cheese, melt cheese. I mean, if you do cheese, melt cheese, or um, uh, you can use them for anything. So this one, it's a very heavy thing. See, they're gonna be a little more finicky to flip, and one reason they're more difficult this way than they would be with the bucket flour is because we did the grinding ourselves in the coffee. Grinder. In the coffee yeah. grinder. So that becomes a little trickier. <laughs> oh, there's a little yeah. bit that we can try. The nice thing is there, wow. You really, you're a master, see? No, you're the master. No, I mean, it's just I'm really impressed. You really do it really well. I love the map that these make. And this is like geological maps. These are caustic crepes. Where are the crepes? The crepes are here. So now, my very favorite way of eating and dressing crepes is this one. Take a crepe. And you take sugar. I'm using powder, which is fine. But the powdered sugar makes it pretty, actually. And then, what I really like with it is this, lemon. You fold it nicely, and then you do this. Ah, that's, that's where the powdered sugar looks beautiful. So a little lemon like this on top. Wow, isn't that beautiful? See? Can I have it? 
You want to share it? Yes. We're going to try it together. Let's see. <laughs> I always thought you'd mm. that end, not the other end. But. No, my favorite end. Mm. But some people prefer that end. Because that has the crisp outer, crap, crisp yeah. thing. You know, they're good, aren't they? Mmm. Mmm. Very good. So, again, we so make a bunch of these. Prepare them. Freeze them. When they're frozen, I stack them up, put them in the plastic bag, and I have them ready. I let them defreeze, and then I just um, warm them up in the pan. But what you can do, and actually, it's not bad at all. I have tried it. You can put them in the microwave for a very short time. I depend on the power of your microwave. I don't know how, how powerful the microwaves are today, but voila, I think that's... Um, a big effort. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Maniku. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. It will be a better one. Yes. It will be a great one. Yes. Santi, be healthy. Put your mask on. And uh, looking forward to January 20th. <laughs> <laughs> Adi Shots. Adi Shots. Eddie. Merci et bon appétit.